Even with the government's support package, energy bills will be much higher this winter than last. The uh, the new price limits, if you like, kicks in um, this this Saturday. Uh, the National Fire Chiefs Council say more people are using open fires and portable heaters to keep warm. And if they're doing so now, as it gets colder, you've got to assume more people will be doing so. But Mark Thomas is area manager from Merseyside Fire and Rescue and part of the National Fire Chiefs Council. Um, Mark, what's your... What's your take on this? It's difficult pe- to tell people not to do these things if, if you know, they need to save money and we can't afford to leave the gas or the electrics on. Hi, Adrian, and Hi. good afternoon to yourself and your listeners. And you're quite right. We, we do have concerns that um, rising costs might lead to more unsafe behaviours. But what we can do as, as a sector in fire and rescue, um, we can give guidance certainly to fire and rescue services to support people, to help them to stay safe through, through these um, through these tricky times. Um, you know, we're being quite explicit around some of the guidance in particular. You know, you reference the opening up of, of you know, maybe chimneys and flues, etc. And you're right, you know, there's an associated cost with that. Um, people can talk to their local fire and rescue services if they are struggling. Um, and we're able to signpost to to the relevant agent agencies i guess as, as a sort of a front runner to all of that we would say you know that the staple almost of a of a fire safe home is is smoke alarms so you know please check your smoke alarms make sure that they're working um if people cannot afford smoke alarms then fire and rescue service can certainly support with that and and push people towards where we may be able to supply smoke alarms mm-hmm. for these, these people i mean, i suppose the the danger is that because open fires have sort of somewhat gone out of fashion and in urban areas you you're basically not allowed to burn very much on an open fire if you know if at all for environmental reasons they sort of not use much i mean it's it, it, what people mustn't do i suppose is look at a, a disused fireplace they hang on a minute I'll lump some paper and some old wood on that, and uh, and 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 off we go. It's, it's not that simple, is it? Yeah, look, and and that's the perfect messaging. Um, it's not quite that straightforward. So, if you have a fireplace that, that's not been used for, for for many, you know, for many a year, if you have a chimney that's not been swept, then please don't be tempted to just to just go ahead and and to burn items. Um, it, it's you know we do have evidence as as a sector of these types of incidents that have, have resulted in, you know, damage to people's property and injuries. So we might expect to see more of these types of incidents, mm-hmm. which is why we're pushing out the, the, these these messages, you know, don't don't have those type of fires. If you must have an open fire or anything that's that's not an electric fire, an electric heater, then, you know, make a real consideration to installing um, carbon monoxide alarms because that, that is a real mm-hmm. challenge where, when we have these type of these type of fires. Landlords after the 1st of October in England and the 1st of December in Wales are, are actually required to fit carbon monoxide um, alarms in, in all of their properties. So we'll be working with landlords, we'll be working with residents and certainly homeowners, again, if they struggle to, to provide these types of devices, they can speak to their local fire and rescue service who will give them quite clear guidance about the things that they can do um, and the things that they shouldn't really do and also how they can access support and help from others. Okay, do stay with us, Mark. I just want to bring in Lawson White, who's a chimney sweep and chairman for the Guild of Master Chimney Sweeps. So, uh, Lawson, thanks very much for coming on. Now, while... I think the general view from the fire service, we it'd be better if people didn't resort to using open fires. If it's something you do want to do, but what's what's got to be checked first before you throw something on it and put a match to it? Oh, good afternoon, Adrian. Uh, well, there are many people who do use open fires already, of course, and uh, but they are perhaps the regular users, perhaps the people who are sweeping their chimneys quite often anyway. Uh, I know I know that's not the issue. For people who are thinking about it, and I had a, I had a call early this morning for someone who, who had done exactly that. He'd removed his electric fire from in front of an old open fire, and now he was ringing around 
chimney sweeps in the local area to see who had first availability to come and have a look at his chimney, which is exactly the right thing to do, obviously, um, if someone's going to use it. Uh, as Mark points out, there, there are a number of issues at stake uh, regarding safety um, and um, the cleaning of the chimney is, is perhaps really just one of them. Um, uh, uh, chimneys could be faulty, there could be leaks, they could have been improperly installed in the first place. So his, his, his warnings about carbon monoxide, mm -hmm. uh, alarms and gases... That, that is an issue. Okay. Uh, Just on chimneys themselves, I mean, sweeping in a way isn't the... I wouldn't have thought it was the main issue because if you don't use it, there's not going to be much soot up there, one would have thought. But then there's people talk about lining, that the lining's got to be correct. I mean, that you know, that needs checking, doesn't it? Uh, well, maybe only 30% of a chimney sweep's work is actually cleaning the chimney. The rest of it is all inspection and checking and advice. Uh, advice on operation and fuels. But the inspection and checking part is absolutely key. Um, uh, the lining, yes, if the chimney's not sound, then there could be a problem with, with, with transiting poisonous combustion gases out of the building properly, um, of course. And various checks can be made to ensure that, uh, uh, that, that, that's, that, that the chimney lining is going to function well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was going to talk about carbon monoxide a bit more because, because in our opinion, chimney fires, although dramatic and potentially damaging uh, to property, they're not so likely to injure persons. Um, carbon monoxide poisoning would be would be more of an issue as far as we were concerned. And um, certainly sweeps check monoxide alarms in, in uh, the presence of alarms in buildings as a matter mm. of course. When, when uh, and by definition... Effect. If you're struggling to keep warm, you're not going to be opening yeah. windows for the ventilation. It, that, that's not adequate anyway. But, yeah. but yes, by definition, when it's cold, uh, people don't. The most vulnerable people uh, in that situation are young and old, and the most vulnerable are old. They tend to stay in one room more, um, not um, open the windows so much, um, not have so much contact with other people to be checking mm. on them. Um, and so we would pay it to pay attention more to people who in that situation. I guess the real thing here is uh, it's getting to the people who are thinking, I don't use it much. Um, I'm going to light it anyway. The, the lining issues it, 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 you raised is a point, but um, if they don't know when it was last swept, there could be a great deal of soot or, yeah. or, or debris inside that chimney. I mean, Ashley, uh, yeah. Ashley from Ulster in, in, uh, in Warwickshire says... Um, my mate Craig is learning how to be a chimney sweep and he came round the other night to practice on mine and the amount of dangerously inflammable gunk that came down was terrifying. One small fire could have set it off. Yeah, well, that, that's perfectly true. Yeah. Um, it's a good fuel. Suits a fantastic fuel. Tires are great fuels mm -hmm. if, if, if it gets going. Okay. I'm just Mark Thomas from the National Fire Chiefs Council. So the other... I mean, moving away from open fires, the other thing I can envisage is thinking, well, we'll turn the central heating off and just heat one room with a small electric fire. Now, that, you know, now, some electric fires, I would assume, um, are, 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 are safer than others. Yeah, certainly, Adrian. And, you know, Lawson's point that he makes, um, by the way, in terms of carbon monoxide is, is the bigger risk there. You know, we, we, we couldn't uh, agree more. Um, but you're absolutely right in terms of how people might might adapt their circumstances to to overcome this. And yes, we're, we're allowed to the fact that people may reconfigure their, pro reconfigure their properties and part use their homes. Um, so, yeah, in terms of electrical safety, you, you may be able to buy, you know, uh, an electrical device over an internet auction site, dare I say, mm -hmm. for a lot cheaper than you might be able to at a reputable dealer. And, and that's, you know, there's a reason behind that, you know, so if you're compromising on price, you are probably compromising on safety too. So we might ask people to avoid um, that, that type of behaviour. Also, you, you, you kind of refer to... Perhaps bringing out, I don't know, an old two-bar heater that's that's been in the garage yeah. for the last 25 or 30 years. And, and, and once again, you know, it won't necessarily just plug in and, and work. You know, there, there might be some factors that we would need to inspect, certainly inspect, the, you know, the cords, 
and the plugs. And if you are using electric heaters, plug them straight into a socket rather than into a gang socket with, with, with other things, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it can quite easily, you know, overcome and overheat. So we would advise people to, to be very careful around that type of um, that type of activity also. But, you know, if, if, if people take these these small snippets of advice that we can push out through each fire and rescue service. And, and we will, you know, we will certainly be doing that um, in earnest. It's it's really quite straightforward to, to stay safe and to stay safe. Yeah. From fire. So, I mean, the danger is, I think, is that more likely the, the advice that tends to go out like this is just don't do it. Don't use electric heaters. Don't light your fire. Don't do that. And so if you, if you take that view... If you put that advice out, that doesn't allow you to give safety tips associated and precautions associated with with doing exactly what you're banning people from doing. I and mean, we need to be careful with that, don't we? Yeah, yeah I mean, you're absolutely right. And, and we're alive to that fact, you know. So we've probably changed our messaging. So we have, you know, a great deal of empathy in terms of those people who we who we sort of deal with on a daily basis. So we engage daily as a sector with older and more vulnerable people. So we understand, you know, some of the challenges that they have. And if listeners are, you know, concerned about, you know, older relatives, perhaps maybe neighbours and loved ones, that, that there are certain, you know, measures that they can take to help to support those people. But you're absolutely right. We, we, we definitely don't want to be preachy. We, we don't want to be, you mustn't do this and you can't do that we want to walk alongside people and to to help them to see you know where the support is how they can access that support and how we as a fire and rescue service can help them to stay fire safe in their properties okay well in the nicest possible way i hope we don't have to get you back on to talk about this in uh, in december or, or or something you know that the the warnings are heeded but uh, mark thomas thank you very much for the national fire chiefs council and also thanks very much to lawson white